Beck and welcome to the Media Book Freakout tag. It is that time again and I wore the same outfit that I'm wearing in this video that I wore last year. Something about the colour red just makes the alarm seem more present because we are somehow halfway through the year. Anyway, the first question on this tag is your favourite book so far in 2023 and I recently discovered this book based on a friend's recommendation. I should have picked it up a lot sooner and that book is Wolf Song by TJ Klune, which is a huge surprise to me given that I DNF the house on the Cerulean Sea by the same author when I thought it would have those cozy fantasy vibes to it. I just didn't like the writing style, but this absolutely slayed me, but in a good way, I think. This is the only book also this year that has made me cry, so expect it to pop up again during this tag. I basically just want to use this book for the entirety of this video, but I probably shouldn't do that <laughs> because, you know, you want some variety, right? Question two is the best sequel that you've read so far in 2023 and I am proud of myself because this is a long series and I am burning through it at a very rapid rate. I read The Memory of Souls which is book three in the Chorus of Dragons series by Jen Lyons. This is a queer high fantasy story and it follows a trio mostly in the first book. We follow Kieran in the second book. We follow Janelle with Kieran's interludes and in the third book we have Kieran, Janelle and another character that makes up their kind of polyamorous trio while they are trying to take on these forces in the world and fight against them. And in this book, a lot comes to head in terms of the politics, the gods and the magic. And I really loved all of that interplay and how these characters fought against all of these things with magical items involved as well. It's got some key fantastic tropes that you would expect in a high fantasy book, but it also does such unique and interesting things with them as well. And there are so many different cultures in here that really just add to the story so much. You don't get lost. I really enjoyed it. And the last 100 pages of this book had me incredibly stressed, which is a sign that I love the characters in here. Even though it's a very large cast of characters, I still can see all of their unique personalities and I expect certain reactions when they interact with other characters so you couldn't just sub them out and put someone else random in and expect a similar result they all stand on their own which is something I really respect given the multitude of them so I'm really enjoying this series so far it's probably one of my new favorite fantasy series if I'm being honest. Question three is a new release that you haven't read yet but that you want to read and I tried this on audiobook and I couldn't get into it for some reason so I went out and bought the physical copy I don't know if that was a mistake or not, but it's on my TBR card. Hang on. Yeah, here it is. I'm not getting it out because there's too much stuff on here next to it, but it's A Day of Fallen Night by Samantha Shannon. And this is an 800 page behemoth, but at least it's somewhat a standalone, even though Priori is considered the first book in the series and A Day of Fallen Night is the prequel. I'm excited to see the world develop even more in the prequel. So when am I going to read it? Honestly, I don't know. It's probably the most intimidating book on my TBR card, if I'm being honest, just because of its length, really. Maybe I can commit to a few chapters chapters at a time and read it over the span of a couple of months because I know that if I sit down and try and read this it's going to take me a whole month to read if I force myself to like push through it I guess so I don't know how doable that will be but maybe over time is more of an easier game plan in terms of approaching it. Question four is my most anticipated release for the second half of the year and that would be Court of Wanderers by Rin Chapeco which is a vampire story and I am fully back on board with reading about vampires at least in that context. I also am really looking forward to Ravensong which is the sequel slash companion to Wolf Song for obvious reasons. And then just to be different, I have a contemporary as well, which is Iris Kelly Doesn't Date. And I loved Delilah Green Doesn't Care and Astrid Parker Doesn't Fail. Those were some really highly rated contemporary books that I read at the beginning of the year. And their sequel and I think final book in that trilogy is coming out at the end of this year. And I have been really waiting for it since I read the other two books in January and February. So I have been on tender hooks waiting for that one to come out. Question five was biggest disappointment. And the next two books that I'm going to talk about were not like two star ratings, hugely disappointed, wouldn't recommend. They are disappointments because I thought that they would be four or five stars and they ended up being about three and a half stars each. And they're from authors that I regularly read from, which is why they were disappointing to me. Because obviously if you've read a writer's work before, you've got inbuilt expectations for their next release. And that's what I had, but it just didn't quite work out that way. So the first one is The Malevolent Seven by Sebastian de Castell, which is about a band of mercenary mages going up against a all magical powerful foe. Then the other one is Tress of the Emerald Sea by Brandon Sanderson, which is the first book in his secret project Kickstarter. And I have reviews for both The Malevolent Seven and Tress if you wanted to hear more about their plots and what I thought. So unfortunately they weren't massive hits for me. They're kind of just underwhelming compared to what I was expecting. Question six is biggest surprise. And I thought Wolf Song was my biggest surprise given how much I loved it and that it made me cry but I've also got Parable of the Sower on here by Octavia E. Butler which is an apocalyptic book but it's set in the very near future to us and it's about the breakdown of society so it's not like people are running away from zombies or anything but they're 
their systems are breaking down to the point where they're struggling to find food. They have to live in communities that regularly get attacked because people are after resources and it's not safe to be on the streets because people will murder you in order to get like a can of beans from you. So it's got those higher stakes in terms of the survival aspect, but I like how this pushed people and connections and community. And it was just a stunning book and I did not expect to love it so much. It really just sat with me and I really liked it. And another one that just kind of sat with me mostly because of the nostalgia, but also the way that the story was told, I listened to the audiobook, which really added to it, is Beyond the One by Tom Felton, which is obviously a non-fiction. It's a memoir or a short memoir about his life so far. It follows his discussion about fame and parasocial relationships and mental health as well and I liked it a lot. I have a lot of respect for it. It felt like sitting down across the table from Tom Felton and he was just telling you his story which was really fantastic so I would highly recommend listening to the audiobook for that one. Question seven is what is your favorite author at least this year and it can either be debut or new to you and new to me would be Ashley Herring Blake who wrote the Brightfall series which is obviously the Delilah Green doesn't care, Astrid Parker doesn't fail, Iris Kelly doesn't date. Those books I think Ashley Herring Blake has written other works, but they're more young adult. So whenever she brings out more adult stuff, I'm definitely going to be on board for just randomly picking that up and hoping for the best. Then I've also got TJ Klune, which is an author I wouldn't have expected to put on here, given that, like I said, I DNF'd one of his books already, but I'll give his other works a tentative try and see if I like them near enough to the ballpark of Wolfsong. Probably not as much as Wolfsong, but we can try. And then also obviously Jen Lyons, because I am loving the Chorus of Dragons series and I really wish she had written more like queer fantasy that I could get my hands on but time will tell hopefully she releases more stuff prompt number eight is one that I always skip I don't like it and it's newest fictional crush and I don't know I'm an adult reading about characters who are younger than me and also they're not real so it makes me feel weird to say that I've got a crush on any of them number nine though is new favorite character and I would have to say Kieran from the chorus of dragon series because he is that unwilling rogue that has a heart of gold and so he gets himself into ridiculous situations he's got such a sarcastic sense of humor and he's very self-deprecating but in a self-aware way and I like his interactions with everybody that he comes across because even if he's about to you know get injured or people are trying to kill him he'll still come out with a one-liner but it doesn't take you out of the story you believe that he will do that because he's just trying to distract them and deflect so that he won't die so I really like him as a character he's very true-hearted but he also makes a lot of mistakes even though he thinks he's right so I like him a lot because he's flawed I guess as well question 10 is a book that made you cry and obviously Wolf Song has made me cry. I don't think anything else has made me cry this year. Question 11 is a book that made you happy and I would say Delilah Green doesn't care just because of the interplay. Again between the characters I'm a massive character reader. I prefer obviously plot but I like my characters to really stand out and jump off the canvas and Delilah Green doesn't care had those characters for me where the relationship focused on Delilah Green who is a photographer she goes back to her small town of Bright Falls to photograph her sister Astrid's wedding and it's a very much shotgun wedding and so everyone is kind of making fun of it in Astrid's close circle but not directly to Astrid's face and one of the bridesmaids Claire is the love interest for Delilah and Claire is bisexual and has been a friend of Astrid for a very long time and now that Delilah is back in town again they have this kind of history that they've got to work through Delilah has family history that she's got to work through as well and obviously she's got to stuff up on a minute scale all of the photo opportunities at Astrid's wedding obviously she does her job but she messes with Astrid and the groom-to-be as well so it's a fun book because it's kind of like romantic comedy but it has those darker elements of grief because Delilah is very much trying to heal from the death of her father so I really liked all of that interplaying across the entire book it was enough that you got a deeper sense of the message but also it had enough levity in it to make you laugh so that's why it made me happy and then another book that is making me really happy I'm currently listening to it on audio is The Sun and the Star which is a Nico D'Angelo story and Nico is a character from the Percy Jackson world not in the the first series I don't think but in the Heroes of Olympus maybe both and he's a son of Hades which in the Percy Jackson world you're usually the offspring of one of the Olympian gods and a mortal parent and that's how you get your demigod abilities and Nico is a very rare son of Hades and because the Percy Jackson world chronicles these characters who are very young they're pretty much kids going on these quests that are life and death and they experience death as well they have a lot of trauma that seems unresolved and this book really dives into that in Nico's perspective because he has PTSD he's very depressed but he's also got people around him that are supporting him and I like the discussion so far it's really valuable to me but it also is 
nostalgic because it's throwing back to all of these characters and scenarios that I'm really loving and the audio is really great and it's presented really well. So that's why it's making me happy because it's nostalgic, but it's also treating all of these issues that were just glossed over or not glossed over, but didn't have time for in the original series. I wanted to know more about their mental health and that's really being discussed now. Question 12 is what is the most beautiful book that you have bought this year? And I mean, technically I didn't buy it this year. It arrived this year though. <laughs> and that is the Frugal Wizard's Handbook to Surviving Medieval England. I think I got that title right. It's on my TBR card and I don't want to get it out for the same reason I didn't get the Samantha Shannon book out, but I recently unboxed it in a book haul. So I'll link that for you if you want to go and check out all of the goodies that came with it. And then the last question on this tag is a book that you need to read before the end of the year. And mine wouldn't just be a book. It would be multiple. Obviously, Frugal Wizard's Handbook would be one of them, but I also have a lot of Terry Pratchett. I've got four books by him and I've read some Terry Pratchett, but I haven't gotten to the others. And I think that's just because the style of his writing is not something that I usually gravitate to, even though I can respect and enjoy it. It's not something that I actively want to pick up. Although when I am reading it, I tend to get through it fairly quickly. So I've kind of put it off and it's just lingered on my TBR cart for a long time. So if I could read it before the end of this year, that would be fantastic. I have them on my TBR cart because Dave loved Terry Pratchett growing up, but I don't have the same nostalgia. So I don't have a connection to it in the same way he does, but I want to read them because I know he loves them too. So it would be great to have them finished for that reason. But that is my media book freakout tag. Let me know if you have a new favorite of this year, like I did with Wolf Song. I would love to know but thank you so much for watching this video i'll come chat to you down below in the comments and i'll see you in my next video bye